queen is on the rise Wear a mini hat so she can open up your eyes Join the convo, the podcast is slick Cop a penny to the spice up your fit, yeah She's a producer, you can buy her to a reek She do the most, but she ain't come to do the least Whether it's the convo or the music you want Find it all here at tttalks.com Come and stimulate your mind with tttalks Promise you'll never fall behind with tttalks The knowledge you're seeking, you can find with tttalks.com So come on and get with tttalks, yeah Peace, family. It's your girl, TT, from TT Talks. I'm so glad to be back behind the mic again to bring you some more bomb content. As always, I appreciate the support. Special shout out to all of my listeners, my subscribers, my sharers, my patrons on Patreon. Uh, All of you, I appreciate all of your support and everything that you do to help uplift my brand. So thank you so much. Uh, If you missed last episode, with the Salam Brothers of Words from Yesterday. You need to catch up, Mustard, okay? They're giving you all the goodness on African proverbs and African philosophy. You're gonna love this show if you missed it, okay? Here's a little clip, just in case you missed it, because I wanna make sure that you stay up on all of the goodness that is happening on your favorite Pan-African podcast, okay? Let's go. Some of my favorite proverbs that y'all post are the proverbs involving character. Mm. <laughs> The Proverbs involving character because I feel like a lot of the pitfalls and some of the negative aspects of of what's happening in our community is just a lack of character and just poor character development, poor character development. Um, And it character, you know, before you, you know, family is your first shrine. And I said, this is my personal proverb. Mm -hmm. Family is your first is your first shrine and character is your second shrine. Seriously. And this is a proverb like that. It's a proverb like that. Character is your second shrine. You have to be so intentional about being a good person, being upright, having integrity, you know, meaning what you say, you know, being kind, being tolerant. You know, it doesn't mean that you're accepting bullshit. Right. But it means that you have a, a, a just a respect and deference for humanity. Um, but in speaking about um, character proverbs, let me know some of like y'all favorite character proverbs. Y'all y'all have any on hand? Well, the one that you said it made me think of one of my favorite proverbs. It says basically, character is an orisha. Um, character is a god. It aids one according to how one uses it. So that 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 made me think when you said the character's a shrine, right? That made me think of that one immediately because it's like, you know, some and I wrote a little bit about this, but it's like sometimes people are looking towards the shrines to 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 bless you or curse you or be the decider for your destiny. But it's like your character is, is gonna is gonna bless you or curse you well before it even makes it right. to to, to Ashun. You know what I'm right. saying? Like it's going, you know. So if you ain't living right. You, you, before you even get to the shrines, you know that that's going, that's going to decide your destiny. I mean, go, go, well, there's, we there's, go back yeah, and forth. Nah, you, ain't, you ain't know how it is, man. Wait, wait. But there's, there's a Yoruba proverb that says, um, "Anyone with good destiny but bad character uh, will soon lose his destiny to his character." And that's mm. fitting mm. exactly into what you're saying. Mm. It, it like no matter how many blessings you want or you got coming to you down your path. If you're not doing what you're supposed to do to humble yourself, to be patient, to, to speak well, to do well unto others and all that type of stuff, them blessings are going to jump right over you and go to someone else, you know? So make yeah. sure your character is, is situated. Now see all this dopeness? Yes, yes, yes. That's why you got to keep up, okay? You got to keep up. You got to catch up. Always pay attention to who I have on my show. It's a beautiful Pan-African affair, Okay. Let me turn this music down for a sec. Let, 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 let me turn this down. I, we we got to have a talk here, okay? As all of y'all know, TT Talks is a Pan-African podcast. Always has been, always will be. So I would be remiss and negligent if I didn't mention the tragedy happening in Nigeria right now. Nigeria is my second home and it's also my spiritual home. So I'm truly saddened and angered by all of this, okay? But it's very important to take these emotions and channel them into something very strategic, okay? Don't just be emotional. Um, It's okay to be emotional. There's nothing wrong with that. Emotions are absolutely normal. 
but you got to be able to be in a space of objectivity so you can be strategic. OK, if you've been paying attention online, there have been hashtag end SARS protests happening all across Nigeria. SARS, S-A-R-S is the special anti-robbery squad. And it's essentially a militarized police force with a horrible reputation of brutality. And people just got sick of it. The people got sick of it. OK, on the 20th of October, uh, which was yesterday, there were reports of them opening fire on unarmed peaceful protesters at the Lekki toll gate. OK, and of course, the powers that be, the media, the government, they're trying to suppress this information and cover it up. Um, I saw somebody retweet uh, an image of somebody taking security cameras down in Nigeria so that, you know, there could, you know, evidence of what happened could be erased. But the people on the front lines have been reporting and they are keeping folks abreast. OK, so I want you all to do your research. I want you to um, find organizations that are on the ground and support them. If you have friends in Nigeria, from Nigeria, hit them up and see how you can support, okay? Because we're all in this together. Because when the protests were happening, when things were happening in Tallahassee, in my city, when things were happening all over the U.S., some of the first people in my inbox asking how they could help was some of my Niger fam. And I'm talking about my Niger family and friends who are in Nigeria, they were the, one of the first people to reach out. Hey, how was everything going in your city? I heard this was happening. How can we help? How can we talk about this in, in, in our media outlets, you know, where we are? So, you know, I'm all about the cross pollination, us reaching across the different various waters that we are helping each other. So in turn, because of my connection there, some of my Niger fam and friends have reached out to me. There's a couple of organizations that I'm vetting out right now just to see, you know, you know, whether I support one or all of them. Um, but I encourage you all to do that. OK. And we and, and the thoughts and prayers are beautiful. I love thoughts and prayers. I love prayers and meditations and reflections. Uh, but Sister Akosua Akoto, um, she's a sister I know from the D.C. area. She's awesome. You should follow her on IG at Akosua, A-K-O-S-U-A underscore Asa, A-S-A. Uh, but she has been rattling off some posts and I just want to read some of the stuff that she's been posting. And uh, she said, no disrespect, but we cannot pray away corruption and imperialism. War has several battlefields. Those of us not fighting physically are still soldiers. We need more than prayer. We need war strategy and economic unity on a global front. It's in everything we do. Support and promote your people. Only your people. We are what we need. This is an African struggle at home and throughout the diaspora. P.S. To my artists, it's time to take the culture back. OK. And TT Talks is all about that. That's why I'm here. That's one of the reasons why I even have this platform. And this isn't just a Nigeria issue, as we all know. You know, if you look at the hashtags all across Africa, you know, in, for Nigeria, it's hashtag NSARS. In the Congo, hashtag Congo is bleeding. That's trending as well. In Namibia, hashtag shut it all down. In South Africa, hashtag am I next. In Cameroon, hashtag anglophone crisis. In Liberia, hashtag rape national emergency. In Ivory Coast and Ghana, hashtag child trafficking, major, huge, big issues that are happening. And the reality is these governments uh, won't save us. Uh, the U.N. won't save us. It is all up to us at this point. And um, again, I'm going to a quote to quote uh, Akoswa when she says somebody asked, you know, give us a list of things to do. What are some things that we can do? Step one right now. And I'm just going to read off what Akoswa put. OK, she said, number one, every established black entrepreneur needs to, in some way, shape or form, establish a platform that only benefits us. At the very least, choose a sector, housing, land ownership opportunities, education, etc., and place a percentage of profits to that cause. It doesn't always have to be official. Choose a place, country, a hood, something. Number two. Every artist needs to understand the importance of imagery, 
promote us in your dance classes, in your music videos. Push the idea of a culture protected by and created for those who birth it. Number three, when we build businesses, find suppliers who are also black owned businesses. Example, fashion designers can employ aspiring black designers to assist in manufacturing. This is about creating a foundation. As we build up, we must also build out. All these African-Americans who did ancestry DNA do some research, get a plot of land in Africa or the Caribbean, push out the foreign developers who depend on natural disasters or the fact that practicing tradition doesn't pay the bills. This is a conversation. Okay, people, these are some viable, tangible steps for us to be able to heal our nations, heal ourselves as a whole, as a people. And, um, you know, I'm all about Pan-African unity, baby. Let's link up. Let's click up. And listen, here's the beautiful thing about having your own platform and making it known what your stance is. And I've made it known that my stance is Pan-African. So, of course, I have a lot of listeners who are African or, you know, continental or living here. And one of my listeners uh, as a young Nigerian sister, she reached out to my inbox because she saw me posting about NSARS and she let me know about an organization that she and some um, other colleagues of her are starting called Project New Nigeria. She literally just emailed me like literally 30 minutes ago because I was like, listen, I'm about to record, but I, w- I want to have information that I can share with people. So listen, Project New Nigeria Um, I'm looking at the PDF document right now. They have some beautiful community goals. There's farming and agricultural goals. You know, there's education goals. There's long-term goals. They have all kinds of goals and information. And I can't wait to take the time to really uh, flesh it out. Um, But if you go on to a GoFundMe and look up Project New Nigeria, read it. Get in touch uh, with the with the founders of the group. Ask them to also send you the detailed plan so that you can review. Uh, and if it moves you, I would financially support. Um, I'm going to look more into it. And if it's something that I feel, um, you know, um, is, 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 is something that I can support and it looks like it is, I'm definitely going to be putting some money that way at the very least put a couple dollars on it. Okay. We are all we got. And even if it isn't an organization that is, is that tickles your fancy or is up your alley, I'm sure that there's one out there that aligns with whatever your, um, your, your goals and your values are that you can support. Okay. Now that we address that, we can move forward with this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful show. Uh, I'm excited, man. Y'all know I'm a whiskey woman, so I'm super excited to share this discussion. Um, We're now on episode 35. My sister TK Burton came on and talked about her venture, her new business. It is called Red Hazel. She created her own whiskey um, along with her brother, who is her business partner. And they created something really awesome and special. And so, you know me, I'm rooting for everybody black. And if alcohol and whiskey is involved, I'm rooting for that too. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So please, please, please listen to the sister's journey on how uh, she was able to turn some things around during this pandemic and start, uh, you know, and do some follow through on her dream. Okay. And so we're going to learn about Red Hazel Whiskey. I'm going to do a tasting during the show. I'm going to do different tastings. I'm going to do tastings with it straight. I'm going to do tastings with ice. She made uh, one of their signature cocktails. And I'm going to uh, let everybody know how uh, how I enjoyed it. So, yeah, this is a fun, just a fun episode. It was done in my home studio here in Tallahassee, Florida. And uh, yes, please. Get your own drink and enjoy, okay? Peace, family. It's your girl, TT from TT Talks. I am so glad to be back behind the mic again to bring you some more bomb content. I'm in my home studio today. I've been doing some Zoom calls. And, you know, uh, prior to all the, the COVID stuff, I used to do a lot of traveling around. And 
it was every once in a while when I would kind of do a re recording in my home studio. So I'm back. I'm glad to be back in my home studio. I have a really, really dope individual here. I cannot wait for everybody to meet her and talk about um, all of the wonderful things that she has going on. But I have Sister TK Burton here. She is a co-owner of Red Hazel. It is a spiced whiskey. And I'm excited because I get to taste it. And she also is going to be making a signature cocktail. Uh, and I'm going to be tasting that too. And everybody who knows me knows that I am a whiskey lady. So it is just wonderful to have another whiskey lady in the house. Um, I did a show recently with uh, Sister Samara from the Black Bourbon Society. And she had a brunch earlier this year in Atlanta. And this is where I met this sister TK and we chopped it up. We had a nice chat. I find out that she's from Tallahassee, even though she's living in Atlanta. So um, we literally were just like, hey, whenever you're in Tallahassee or whenever I'm back in Atlanta, let's do a show and talk about Red Hazel Whiskey. So it went, it's going down this weekend in Tallahassee. We are here. We have our whiskey uh, glasses ready. We have the whiskey ready. We are uh, going to get ready to prepare the cocktail shortly. So welcome, Sister TK on TT Talks. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm glad to have you Happy to be here. here. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all are going to be so uh, impressed and excited about this story about um, making shit happen. <laughs> Y'all know what I always say on the interwebs. We always have these kind of wild ideas, these big ideas, and we just kind of sit on them. And I always say, pull the MF trigger, pull the trigger. It don't got to be perfect all the time. It doesn't have to even make sense all the time. Eventually it does have to make sense. But initially when you're brainstorming and you're hashing out ideas, you just got to find out how to make your idea happen. So without further ado... Sister TK, can you let uh, everybody first know who you are, where you're from, just a little bit of your background, and then we'll hop into the whiskey story. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here uh, introducing everyone to Red Hazel Whiskey. Uh, again, I'm TK Burton. I am originally from Kansas City, Missouri, but raised in Tallahassee, 1010 Basin Street. Hey, Am <laughs> how y'all doing? Um, you know, I've moved around a lot. I've learned a lot from different people. I went to UCF, shout out UCF, okay, Central nice. Florida, Orlando. Um, and I ended up in, in Atlanta about four years ago and okay. just decided to set my roots in Atlanta. Okay. So. And I love Atlanta. I miss love Atlanta. It. I need to, I need to get on back to Atlanta, you know, because of everything COVID going on, I have not been traveling, but you know, mm -hmm. I, I really miss Atlanta. And when I start to to get to moving around, Atlanta's yeah. probably going to be the first place I come go on, outside of visiting family. <laughs> That's probably going to be one of the first places I go. And I'm probably just going to sit there and marinate and eat a bottle of food, drink all y'all drink. Hey, come on. We got the drink. Yeah. We can go to the park, hang yeah. out, take in all the sun. Let's do all it. All the energy. I'm excited. Come yes, on yes, back. yes. Come on back. Yes. So listen. So how do we go from... Moving to Atlanta and setting down roots to making whiskey. Because, like, what did you study at UCF? <laughs> what? Hospitality management. Hospita well, okay, this yeah. is in the same vein as that. Yeah. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. So, so Orlando kind of set the foundation of my thoughts of Red Hazel. Got so it. I studied hospitality management. Mm -hmm. um, I also worked in the nightclubs in Orlando for Got about it. eight years mm -hmm. as a VIP manager, host, bottle sales girl. And I... I grew to love the the background and the history of how liquor is made, mm -hmm. how wine is made, how mm -hmm. champagne is made. It's mm -hmm. just like, all right, so we got these bottles at the club. We're selling for this much. Okay, we pay this much and we make a profit. All right, I got to get into this business somehow. Like, how can I get into it? When I moved to Atlanta, I really realized, okay, I'm not really into hospitality anymore. But I love, I still love liquor. I love yeah. the idea yeah. and the the chemistry behind it. Me too. And the the like the chemistry is great. A piece of a piece of rye, a wheat, a corn, and you turn it into this great beverage I can mix in my home. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So I woke up one morning. I called my brother. I said, "I'm going to start a whiskey business," and that was two and a half years ago. Mm. And I was like, "Okay, we're going to start this whiskey business. I'm going to do it on my own, no investors." Uh, 
no one really helping. That was my mindset at the beginning. And I wrote down, this is my Red Hazel book. Y'all can't see it, but I have a Red Hazel book. I started with 30 different names. Wow. And I crossed out names as I went on and uh, ended on Red Hazel, found a distillery. Our distillery is in Florida. Um, our partners are in Florida, although we're based out of Georgia. Yeah. And just got the ball rolling. Uh, my brother, Ty Burton, he is my business partner now. We are fully funding this on our own. Mm -hmm. And it is an amazing piece of work that we have coming. This is dope. So I got to get the, the, the first breakdown. So mm -hmm. how did you even, where did Red Hazel the name come from? It sounds like you were just adding names, crossing out names, and probably were remixing <laughs> some stuff and moving stuff around. How did we ultimately end up with Red Hazel? Yeah, so Red Hazel is very personalized to me. Mm -hmm. So as I was going through the names, I came up with this one because red is my favorite color and hazel is the color of my eyes. Mm. But then as we get deeper, I started thinking about, okay, me as a person, what does what does red hazel mean as TK or as anyone that drinks it? Red is more of that fire, that burn inside mm -hmm. of you, that it's a passion drive. Color. Yeah. yeah, that drive. Yeah. And hazel is more of a calm side mm -hmm. that brings you down a little bit when you're on, on a maybe Friday night after work and you just, okay, I need to calm down before mm -hmm. I make the kids dinner. Right, right, right. So bringing those two together, like, okay, that that calm, fiery passion behind it. I love it. it. And yeah. I love it. And, and it's all... Everything that she's describing is also kind of with it, with the look, with the logo, and mm -hmm. with the the bottle. If you're listening to the podcast, you probably are looking at the logo or and or the bottle on 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 your screen, whatever you're 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 listening to this on. Um, and you mm -hmm. can and you can see there was just a lot of care and and, and detail mm -hmm. into um, the design and the marketing. And um, I'm I'm very intrigued, mm -hmm. um, particularly in having conversations with Samara about how whiskey is marketed mm -hmm. to black people you, you know what i'm saying it's yeah. like crown raw that's it <laughs> it's, that's it that's it, that's it. it's a little crown raw a that's little it. that's just like one other one maybe a little uh <laughs> little woodford reserve <laughs> maybe maybe if you know a little half of something and jack and jack <laughs> you know and jack and and yeah. and whiskey is usually marketed as a kind of this very rugged cowboy type men's drink. very masculine yeah. you know type yeah. of drink and um then you have yeah. a whiskey here that is it the marketing appears to be a little bit more elegant you it know? is and our our uh, logo is is elegantly bold mm -hmm. our tagline elegant enough for a woman yet bold enough for a man love it uh, no one has seen it just yet, but we do also have a Red Hazel character that we will be releasing oh, nice. once we release as I'm well. I'm excited. Yeah, I'll show I'll show that to you. To you get, okay. TT, you get the exclusive. I get, I get the exclusive. TT, get the exclusive. Um, but yeah, you know, one thing we're trying to change with the whiskey business is first and foremost, introducing, well, not necessarily introducing, but bringing it into the African-American community more. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of black folks, just like my mom, for example. Right. She's been drinking Jack her whole life. Mm -hmm. Has never had any other whiskey or, or bourbon for that matter up until maybe two months ago. Mm -hmm. And she's now getting introduced to different types of bourbons and whiskeys. Mm -hmm. And the thing with us as African-Americans, we get used to something and we stick to it yeah, yeah. trying something new is not not no, really gonna happen but we are now in 2020 hello let's try something new let's try something new and whiskey is quote unquote a man's drink i yeah. mean when it was introduced it was introduced as a man's drink yeah but when you come to atlanta you have women up there that have groups whiskey mm -hmm. and cigars yeah yeah now, i'm not yeah. a cigar girl but I have my girlfriends that whiskey and cigars and they're at the speakeasies and they're drinking. Yeah. You go in there and you see mostly women. Yeah. And that part of the marketing is always missed mm -hmm. because people are so focused on the man because this is a manly drink. Yeah. And reality is more of a woman's drink. So absolutely. Let's go ahead absolutely. and continue to introduce that into the into the market. I'm excited about that. I was watching, I wish I could remember the title. Um, it was like a, it was a documentary of some type on um, 
like master distillers mm. in like scotch and bourbon industries. Oh. And they did a focus on women. Mm. And um, some of the men were talking about how they really love that women are getting into the space because they're like, women have more complex palettes. They're able to smell on the nose a lot. It's like their their sense of smell, their sense of taste is a lot more broad and a mm-hmm. lot more elegant and a lot more sensitive than men. So yeah. when you have someone who is really into it and they're a woman and they're tasting it, how it's going to be described is going to be a lot more descriptive. You're going to be, exactly. people are going to be smelling that. Mm, it smells like, you know, I, I smell apples, fresh apples and I <laughs> berries I flowers and <laughs> I, I smell a uh, newborn baby hair and, and <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm I'm being a little bit ridiculous with that. <laughs> little serious, baby's breath. Right, little baby's <laughs> little breath, baby. you know. I smell it on the nose. <laughs> but um, it's it's very exciting to be um, in this space at this space and time as a woman, yeah. as somebody who um, I love. I like spirits, period. Absolutely. But whiskey is just like my my preferred choice. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited. We're going to get into this tasting in a few minutes with the Red Hazel. Yes. Um, who who is your target audience in mind when you were thinking when you were creating? Um, so when we were creating Red Hazel, we were thinking our our base would be uh, individuals between twenty five and forty years old that are more in like their boss mode. Like, hey, I'm walking into a bar, but I'm coming in here to also network but have fun. So individuals between 25 and 40 that are into the business world, um, trying to, trying to bring themselves up Mm -hmm. and bring themselves into a different level. Mm -hmm. I guess I say, Oh, we're going to use Sierra's word. They're trying to level up, up. get to their boss. So we also look at the individuals that just want to have a good time. So red hazel is made for the red, and yeah. the hazel is yeah. made for those trying to boss up or bossed up, mm-hmm. but they're also made for those individuals that just want to have a good time and maybe take some shots with their friends. Yeah. The fun thing about Red Hazel, it is a whiskey you can shoot. We- <laughs> that may happen today, folks. I'm just telling you now. Okay? It is one you can shoot. I love it. Yes. I love it. Because sometimes people have a hard time trying to, trying to do that. And a lot yeah. of whiskeys, particularly very refined taste whiskey mm. so not really designed to take shots no. but she's saying with this you can do it it's for that as well as neat as well as cocktail yes so it's, it sounds yes. like it's very versatile it's very versatile the the end goal with it was to be versatile mm-hmm. it was to appeal to whiskey drinkers and non-whiskey drinkers so when we went through the process we went through about six or seven different um, mixes Mm -hmm. before we decided with our distiller, okay, this is the one we're going to go with. We had non-whiskey drinkers tested. We had whiskey drinkers tested. And we had people that don't even drink tested. Mm -hmm. And this is what we came up with. And I'm also creating a cocktail book to release during the holidays. Nice. So you know how, you know, different ways you can't drink Red Hazel. So we really wanted it to be versatile so people can enjoy it however they want to i love it i'm excited about yeah. that i'm somebody who generally probably 85 percent of the time i drink whiskey neat mm-hmm. um every once in a while i may put a few drops of water or a little splash of ice in it if it's kind of got a little burn on it um yeah. but i'm usually drinking it neat um and i rarely drink cocktails <laughs> um so i'm excited to to taste it because not that i don't yeah. like them i just prefer to have it yeah neat. Um, but I'm excited to taste this cocktail. Um, I feel like it's just going to be real sexy. It And it is. It's going to be real sexy. It's like having a new drink every time. So when you drink it neat, you'll get certain notes. notes you'll taste yeah. it. I mean, it, it's a spice whis- whiskey, so it has cinnamon in it. Mm-hmm. But when you put a piece of ice in it, it expands that cinnamon and you get more of the rye. I see. This is a three-time distilled blended rye whiskey, two years aged. Mm. So it has a lot of flavors in it, but until you put the ice in it or the water in it, you don't get a lot of it. So it's kind of like in the in the 750 milliliter bottle, we got about five different drinks okay, in okay. that one bottle. And what proof is it? 70 proof. 70 proof. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we got 70 proof, which means mm. it's, it's probably not super duper hot, which is a good thing. Right. Um, for all the people out there who kind of are like, oh, he burns. 
Our goal was not to have the burn. I got you. No burn. I got you. I mean, if you don't drink a lot, you, right. know, you might feel a little. You may feel it. <laughs> if, 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 if whiskey ain't your thing, you, you may still feel, feel it, but it, it ain't going to bust you upside the head like, you know, like something else. Right. Um. That's wonderful. So how, so how did you even get the mash bill together? I, I, mash bill, mm-hmm. basically for my folks who, who don't know, mash bill is basically just a recipe. Mm-hmm for you know how how much how much corn how much rye like your so that if anybody is to come behind you and want to make the same thing they get replicated mm-hmm. um so you said you went through several so our distiller uh we pretty much went to him and we were like hey this is the idea we have this is our end goal what we want to achieve he's like all right well i have this i have this and this already create it and we can do a blend or we can order from outside and blend different rise. And I was like, okay, well, let's see what, what we can work with. So he actually sent us multiple samples based on what we told him. And the great thing about having a partner is when, when that partner's on the same page as you, Mm -hmm. and then you go to a potential partner and they're on the same page, Mm -hmm. it's amazing. So when we went to our distiller and he understood what we were looking for and we had our conversation Mm -hmm. and he was like, okay, I got this. We can do this. Nice. Sent us the samples. We sent, uh, sent him some feedback and said, Hey, let's tweak a few things. Let's do this. Let's do that. And once he sent us the remaining samples, the new samples, we knew, we knew which one was it from just from smelling it when we opened it. it, Like, okay, yeah, this is it. So she has a, a sample bottle here and um, we're going to start yeah. off with it. Just do a neat taste. Then we're going to yeah. add some ice. Then we're going to take a quick pause. We're going to go and see what the cocktail is talking about. And then I'll probably come back up here and we'll wrap up with our cocktails. Mm-hmm. And um, yes, is there a soft launch date, a hard launch date? So we launch online October 1st nice. on our web on our website, okay. www.redhazel.net. Uh, we will be available online first. We kind of mm-hmm. had to do a lot of pivoting with COVID. So, sure, you know, sure. that was fun. But we will be available to deliver in 22 states on October 1st. Look, 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 look. Did, did y'all hear me? 22 states. 20. And all you have two. to do is go on our website and order. That's all and you got And it's going to be delivered to your door. You ain't got to do nothing else. Nothing else. Get on an order. That's it. Go on and get it. That's it. If you don't drink whiskey. Go ahead Still and get, get it. it. Cause get there's it. somebody in your family that drink whiskey, Crown Royal or, or something, some Jack Daniels or something. Go ahead and get it. Get it for him. Easy. <laughs> even if even if you don't want to do, you can. I'm I'm curious to see how people bake with it. It mm-hmm. sounds like something that would be very cool to do different types of things. So my birthday was this past weekend, right? Uh, and I actually did a crab bowl, and my friend, he's a chef, and he was like, sis. Bring me some red hazel. I'm gonna make a. I'm, I'm gonna make the sauce with it, and it was amazing. He what? he used red hazel to make. Oh Lord Jesus! <laughs> it what? was it was amazing. He made this the sauce to go on the crabs, and he did a butter as well. Mm, that's and I've I've done a marinade with it already. Oh my so goodness. we may on top of the recipe book probably you know come out with a do few a little cook. Yeah. yeah. Why? because why not because why not i love it so this first taste is gonna be neat (laughs) cool okay this one so we got neat and then once we're ready for the ice we'll we'll do that all right so anybody you know you got to look at the color it is Mm -hmm. um it's uh we have a golden amberish a color, um, and it's and it's golden. It's it's mm-hmm. very golden in color. There's a little hint of reddish in it, and it kind of coats the glass pretty well. So it maybe um, have kind of an oily mouth mouthfeel. The nose is not very very super strong. I'm smelling a little bit of cinnamon. I can smell the rye on the end a little bit. Um, so let's take a taste. The moment of truth. I 
I really, 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 that, that rice, the, the cinnamon is good too. The cinnamon is so subtle. It's not mm-hmm. strong and syrupy like a fireball. Mm-hmm. I don't actually mind su- f- fireball because I like mm-hmm. cinnamon. So, you know, I'm like more the berry or whatever. <laughs> but I like this. It's it's a lot more subtle. And this is definitely um, something that you can um, take a shot of as well. You know, it, it, it tastes like it can mix very well with other things. So this seems like a very mm-hmm. enjoyable sip here. A lot of um, people that we've had taste so far, they're like, oh, so it's like a fireball. And we're like, no, because the, the difference between us and fireball is you can taste the rye. Mm-hmm. You get the whiskey. But our goal was to not have so much burn. Mm-hmm. So putting the cinnamon in there mm-hmm. helps it out with the burn. Yeah. yeah. There's a little bit of a burn. There's a dryness that I like. Mm-hmm. I, I like dryness. You know, I like dry wines. I like dry you know, liquors. So it, it is definitely a little bit dry. And um, I like how it's kind of expanding out. The taste of it is kind of expanding mm-hmm. out into my nose a little bit now. <laughs> but it's pleasant. It's mm-hmm. very, everything is very pleasant about it. Um, it does taste young. It is young. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's, it's a fun drink. It's a fun drink. Um, so you said yeah. two years age, two years it, ta- age. it tastes like two- and it's blended. Yeah, it's yeah. two years age. It tastes it tastes blended. So yeah. if you're used to stuff being um, straight, heavy, <laughs> yeah, straight and and straight or barrel proof or mm-hmm. aged for several years, mm-hmm. it's definitely going to taste young to you. Um, mm-hmm. But if it's you know something that you're looking for, just light and fun, I'm really enjoying this. This is a good, nice, um, nice nice with an apple cider Mm -hmm. this would be really nice with an apple cider just to add a little bit of a kick to it so coming up you know it's fall i'm sad because i'm not a fall (laughs) you know everybody be like oh fall leaves pumpkin spice oh the pumpkin spice oh gosh there's spice and apple cider and (laughs) apples and they just want to skip and leaves and shit that's great (laughs) they want to do everything Uh, and i I should not act this way because i was born in the fall this is so this the fall is really my time of year. Yeah. I don't know why I be hating. <laughs> but um, you know, I'm more of a It's summer. okay to have a little hater in it. So <laughs> but I'm more of a summer girl. So um so this is actually a very yeah. nice, fun summer drink, you know. Mm-hmm. Um I'm so I, I I appreciate it. It is and it, it's it's one it's it's the first product of a line of products that we will be producing under red hazel Mm -hmm. so you know just kind of get familiar with the name get familiar with the brand because we will have Mm -hmm. other things coming out in the next 10 to 15 years and you know let me tell y'all at 70 you said 70 proof proof. at Mm -hmm. 70 proof i was expecting it to be kind of super sweet Mm -hmm. and it's not it's Mm -hmm. not super sweet Cause I really hate super sweet drinks. We were just talking yes. about this downstairs. <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm not a fan of super sweet anything drinks. I don't care if it's sweet tea. I don't like sweet, super sweet coffee. You don't, don't like sweet tea either. I love I sweet. I, was... tea. I like sweet tea. I just don't like it to be like diabetes tea. You you put unsweet tea in it. I do. I mix Me it. Me too. I knew we. I knew. Oh yes. I knew yes. we would. Yes. Same Sassy thing with girl. lemonade. I usually cut lemonade yeah. with um, unsweetened tea. See, you know, I knew we were, we were see here. that. Yeah. I, I don't. So yeah. I really, I really like this because this is not too sweet. It's a little bit dry. I'm trying mm. to describe it for the, for, for the people out here. So there's mm. a little bit of cinnamon on the end. You can definitely taste the rye, but for people who are not fans of rye, I don't think it'll be a bad shot for you to taste it because the rye nothing is overpowering about mm. this drink the cinnamon is yep. subtle the sweetness is subtle the rye is subtle everything is very subtle and it's kind of um it's very layered you know yeah. and this is the neat the neat taste we're gonna do another i'm gonna do another tasting with a little bit of ice she's gonna get me tipsy Woo! just a little bit and the ice, the ice changes the flavor just a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely, makes it into a, a different drink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now that it's cooled a little bit, bouquet still about the same. The nose mm-hmm. is still about the same. Smells smells um, young. There's a little bit of fruitiness to it. Um, 
a little bit of the rye you can catch on the end. There's even a little bit of, and I hate to use this description because people don't like it, but I like it. There's, there's, there's a little bit of smell of like, um, like a cough syrup a little bit, but I like mm. cough syrup, you know? So somebody who hears that, it may be a turn off. Like, wait a minute. I what? hate to use that descriptor. Um, because you know, I actually like cough syrup and, 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 and most normal Americans, most normal people we are like, like, no, that ain't it sis. That mm. ain't it. So if you are not a fan of cough syrup, just, just, just discourage that. That's my palate. Okay. But I want to be as accurate as possible. Um, so I'm going to take a sip here with the ice. Everyone's palate is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That brings the cinnamon out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. The ice brings out the cinnamon. Nice. Nice. It also um, cuts back on that very minimal amount of burn I had and the nose on the end. Um, yeah, the ice makes it very refreshing, actually. Mm -hmm. The ice brings yeah. it. I'd probably, even though I'm a neat uh, whiskey drinker, this mm -hmm. is probably something that I would drink with ice, you know, just on a summer day, chilling, chilling. out by the pool, yeah. hanging out at the beach, yeah. throw a couple ice cubes in, put a little splash of red hazel in, and you're set. It really makes it a really um, pleasant experience. It's definitely, definitely a drink we wanted for people to enjoy it for whatever occasion. Whether it's your your happy hour, whether you're at a pool party, you're chilling on your deck, or you just come home after work and you're just like, okay, I need to wind down. Any occasion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely, um, it's just pleasant. It's pleasant. It's a good <laughs> sip. I'm starting to feel a little bit of uh, just body heat just mm -hmm. from drinking the alcohol, but I don't feel like I'm just out here tipsy pouring sweat. Now it will get you tipsy. Though. I believe it. it. Will. I believe it one hundred percent. And I'm very glad that I'm at my house. Safe something, zone. Something tells me that by the time she leaves out this dough, it's I'm, gonna be bedtime. I, That's it. Yeah, basically, it's gonna be bedtime. But it, it will it will get the job done if you're if you're looking to get just a little buzz. You can if you're just looking to relax. You can if you. We're also going to create uh, recipes for parties. So punch oh, bowls nice, nice. for you to use red hazel. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. And as I'm continuing to drink it, the rye is starting to turn into a fresh baked bread mm -hmm. kind, kind of situation. I didn't really taste it at first. Mm -hmm. um, but now as I'm continuing to drink and the flavors and the taste are kind of compounding, I'm starting to taste a little bit of bread, croissant a little bit. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm getting some croissant vibes. That's the know. first time we've heard that one. Yeah. The, just a very light, flaky pastry dish. You okay. Know, that's not sweet. So that's yeah. why I was thinking croissant, <laughs> you know. Yeah, okay. this is very, very, very nice as I'm continuing to sip. Do y'all have an Instagram? We do. Red okay. Hazel Official. Red Hazel Official. Red Hazel Official on Instagram and on Facebook. And on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Okay, so make sure that you are getting on social media. You are um, following because it sounds like in the upcoming weeks and months, there's going to be a lot of fantastic um, things rolling out. So yes. I'm just... Um, I'm excited that it's happening. Yes. And make sure you sign up for the mailing list because mm -hmm. everything is not uh, exposed or given on, on Instagram, social media. We actually have our mailing list as exclusive. They get all the exclusive information, um, any deals, any recipes, uh, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, we will also have some events and ha well, virtual events, dear COVID, yeah. uh, virtual events, happy hours and things that are starting in October. So we'll be sending out information about those and how to get signed up as soon as we release. So people can get their bottles first. Uh, so a lot of, a lot of interesting things coming up with Red Hazel. We're really excited. I'm so excited. It's finally here. It's been a long time coming. Yes, yes, yes. Long time coming. Yes, it, it, is, yeah. a, it is a lot. People don't understand if they've never taken an idea from thought all and pushed it yeah. all the way through, particularly when you're mm -hmm. making a product. It's one thing when yeah. you're delivering a service. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm more service based mm -hmm. in, in a lot of my, my daytime job, you know, I do like, you know, doula work, massage, physical therapy, that's more yeah. service work. But, um, you know, as I start to kind of developed 
develop the TT Talks brand and start getting into actual product. Product yeah. development is taxing. It's a lot. It's a it's lot. It's taxing. And 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 the thing about it is is if you have something that you want to produce, you can do it. Yeah. But if you listen to to Sister TK's story, one it did not involve solely herself. You mm-hmm. know, she it sounds like she was able to reach out to connects networks um things that she learned through her years in mm-hmm. the hospitality business things that she was able to yeah. to capture just f- from being a whiskey lover yes. and, and just a liquor lover um and then she partnered up with somebody mm-hmm. and she partnered up with somebody who she trusted who she knew that you know they could share the workload mm-hmm. and i'm sure that there's a lot of strengths from on his hand you have oh, your yeah. own strengths and then <laughs> You know, managing that relationship, too, because it's hard to do business project with family members sometimes. It's tough. And this this whole process has been very tough. Um, I mean, as a as a business owner in general, you go through these emotional times, you go through these mental times. And Mm -hmm. like I said, it's been two and a half years in the making. And I've been furloughed since March Mm -hmm. due to COVID. Mm -hmm. So it really gave me that push. I. What am I going to do? What kind of work well, were you doing? Event staffing. Event so staffing. I worked it on the back end with experiential marketing and mm-hmm. events and did their staffing. Uh, so now we don't have any events. Right. You know, some of my my main clients work with, you know, the NFL, the NBA, and they don't need, they don't need staff. Yeah. <laughs> they just need their venue. Yeah. So I talked to my brother. I talked to my parents. I talked to God. I was just like, yeah. okay, what, what am I doing? I can't sit home and just do nothing. Right. But now I have my time back to focus on Red Hazel because when you work full time Mm -hmm. and you're trying to start a business, Mm -hmm. once you get home from work, it's like, okay, I need to focus on my business. But you really can either, you have one of two choices, give your business a few hours or get sleep. Mm. (laughs) Tell me about it. Or spend time with your significant other. Yeah. So it's like, okay, what do I do? But now I have my time. Mm-hmm. And with within 60 days of being furloughed, we have finished our marketing plan. We have finished the social media. I've created the content pages and we just got the ball rolling. Got it done. And it, it was it was that kick in the ass that I needed. Yeah. Asking for help is not mm-hmm. that's not easy for me. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, you're you don't have a job. You need to get this yeah. business started. Yeah. Where can you hone in on your network, your friends, your family, even even social, social media networks right, and right. you know reaching out to people just to get the ball rolling. Right. So now we have distribution which is mm. mostly self distribution because right. of course because of COVID, COVID nobody's taking new products. Correct. So now it's really okay. Where's that hustler in you? Mm-hmm. You got it. Mm-hmm. I remember in college, you were working three jobs Hello? and going to sleep at three or four o'clock in the morning, getting up at seven for a class. Hello. You got it in you. Yeah. Do it. Dig deep. So we dug deep and here we are. Yeah. Two and a half weeks from release. This is why I wanted to have the sister on TT Talks. You know what I'm saying? Because same thing happened mm-hmm. with TT Talks podcast. My first episode, the pilot episode is garbage. <laughs> It's just not good, <laughs> but that's okay. You got to mm-hmm. be okay with doing things a little wonky and a little bit, you know, um, funky at first and then refine it over time because people are going to, they're going to catch on and they're going to roll with Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Like, even if you look at like, like Issa Rae, mm-hmm. when, before she even did the, 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 um, awkward black girl, she mm-hmm. did a series, I think it was called dorm diaries or something like that. Dorm diaries. It wasn't exactly all that great. Um, but it was her way of kind of consistently honing mm-hmm. her craft. And then she moved on to the awkward black girl. And now she has insecure, right. you know, and we love insecure, we love insecure. <laughs> we love insecure. And so that's how I kind of see all of these different things, um, mm-hmm. you know, from what I'm doing, and what she's doing. And then my second story, I just got my FAA certification for a drone license, right? Just got my 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 brand new drone. And when I say new drone, it's like all the highest tech shoots in 4K. Ugh. Gorgeous drone. Beautiful. Had it about two 
solid weeks. And what did I do? I lost it forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhere in a swamp. <laughs> Why? Because I misjudged something. She got adventurous. And I got adventurous. Got I was adventurous. trying to do something and I was trying to have a special shot. Um, and it, it, it didn't work. I didn't think it all the way through. I think a little bit of wind caught me too. And, um, mm -hmm. I lost, I basically lost the drone in the swamp. It's basically unretrievable. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm having to just take that hit in the chest and get another one. But it's all mm -hmm. about sometimes you got to look like an idiot for you to, shine and look like the genius that you yep. are because you can't be afraid of looking like an idiot and you also can't be afraid of looking like a genius either yeah i see that people are yeah. afraid of that you people know, are too. afraid of it it's all about the confidence because you're always going to have critics mm -hmm. but you're the, you're always your worst critic mm -hmm. as women we absolutely. are our biggest critics absolutely but one thing that actually i just discussed this with with ty the other day you know what if people don't like it mm -hmm. like what what happens and i'm like if people don't like it, they don't like it. That's fine. Just give me that feedback. Listen. It's okay. Everybody if, don't like me. <laughs> listen, if people are drinking steel reserve to mm -hmm. 11 for 75 cents a can. <laughs> oh, goodness. Gracious. If people are drinking that shit on the daily. <laughs> somebody, somebody gonna like gonna Red drink. Hazel. It may not be everybody. That's okay. Right. That's okay. Right. The beautiful thing about the liquor business is there's a lot of variety. You got your choices. And we're just adding another option. Just adding another option. A better option for individuals uh -huh. that like whiskey Hello? or don't like whiskey. Hello. Drink it. Mix it. Whatever you cook with it. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. And I can see non-whiskey drinkers enjoying it. It yeah. may not be their jam. They may prefer their vodka mm -hmm. or their white rum or whatever. Yeah. But... They're going to be like, you know what? That's all right. And maybe if they, they may not get it for their home, but maybe mm -hmm. if they're going to a housewarming, right. pick up a bottle of red hay, right. so take it to the housewarming. Yeah. Because they know the people in the home enjoy whiskey or cinnamon or spiced, exactly. you know, liquors or things like that. So it's, it's, it's not necessarily tasting it and being like, I'm going to be a loyal fan forever. Right. But it's about having it as an option. And on your bar. And on your bar. On your bar. And it has been hangover tested people hello that's important hangover tested that's important <laughs> i need people to know that that is important i we both encourage and you to drink responsibly drink responsibly no however sip responsibly sip, sip responsibly. i like that sip yes. responsibly i'm gonna add sip that to the lexicon <laughs> sip. we're gonna sip Sip responsibly. Responsibly. Yes. I'm here for that. Yes. And I'm feeling a little happy and giddy and warm now. Now that <laughs> now that my my splashes have um come in. Talk to me a little bit about like your 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 ultimate vision. Like what are some mm -hmm. of some of your, your your goals that you see maybe in the next five years, the next yeah. ten years? Absolutely. So with Red Hazel, I want this company to become a family company. Nice. You know how you have all the Jack Daniels, you have the Woodford Reserve, nice, you have nice. those that's been in the family mm -hmm. for ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want this to become a family business where we can pass it down and eventually have multiple products. Nice. We want to have mixed products that can go into places like Publix. Mm -hmm. But in there, you got to have a certain level of liquor in it and it's a I different process but we want to have an aged whiskey we will nice. have an aged whiskey nice we will have other products that come along with our brand so we Exciting. want it to grow mm -hmm. we do want it to grow yeah. but here's the fun part of having a liquor business or whiskey business in general we don't have to have a whole lot of employees hello that's that's yeah. the great part and we yeah. can run it how we want to absolutely so overall in goal i want my children's children children to be able to run this mm -hmm. and if they don't want to that's fine but yeah that's the but goal the ones for who are us. interested in it they absolutely. can continue to carry it on absolutely nice and over the next 10 to 15 years we want to have another four or five products underneath our belt nice so red hazel spice whiskey yeah. is the first got this it this is to introduce everyone to red hazel to in red general. hazel just the brand just the brand and brand business. recognition yeah and got it and then when we come out with something like our our 
our version of Tennessee whiskey with mm-hmm. the lemonade or we we go ahead and bottle one of our specialty cocktails. We're going to be able to do that and people are going to recognize, OK, well, hey, TK had this recipe book and I really like that cocktail, but I don't like making it because I got to muddle these raspberries and all that. <laughs> OK, great. We put it in a bottle for you. You can just go pick it up. Just go get it. Just go get it. Go on and get it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Tell everybody again, because I want to make sure, because me and Sister TK, we're about to go downstairs. Yes. We're about to hook this cocktail up, okay? Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to come back with my cocktail, and I'm going to talk about just how sexy and luscious yes. I'm feeling with the cocktail, and we're going to wrap everything up. All right. Does that sound good? That sounds great. Let's All go right. make uh, the cocktail name is Serenity. Serenity. Are you going to tell everybody the ingredients for I won't just yet. She won't just yet. Just yet. That's okay. <laughs> You're going to get it soon, but you got to get the book to get it. <laughs> Boop. Well, actually this one. Oh, this one is not in the book. Okay. This is a specialty cocktail. Oh, snap. So anything that our followers receive online or in our newsletter is not in the cocktail recipe book that is going to be released so you get a good mix of everything a great mix you get the exclusive mm-hmm. and then you get the book yes and when the book comes out it's coming out towards the holidays it's going to have 30 recipes in it five yeah. which will be for parties yeah punch bowl yeah punch bowl recipe we are going to call it i love it so you get get a little mix of everything listen yeah this is exciting I don't know if y'all are understanding my (laughs) level of excitement. There's layers to my excitement. You know, there's layers as somebody who likes liquor and whiskey. So there's, Mm -hmm. that's one layer layer because I'm excited to see a sister, um, go for it. Yes. Just go for it, you know? And, and, and it's, it's, we're we're in real challenging times and Mm -hmm. I know everybody is, is not always in the position to go for what it is that, you know, I'm not one of the people that, you know, trying to shame people for doing stuff. Although mm-hmm. somebody on Twitter told me that I was the other day, but whatever. What? Oh God, they were wilding block on Twitter. <laughs> it wasn't even, they, they weren't even worth a block. block it em. was so rag. I, 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 I just, it was, I was baffled because basically I was saying, um, somebody was saying, you know, um, if you have a business and you don't have like, um, if you don't have a website for your mm. business, mm-hmm. it kind of robs your legitimacy a little bit, just mm-hmm. from a perception standpoint. You know, if you don't have an, a website where people can go and do e-commerce. Yeah, even a right? landing page. Just a landing page, yeah. even that. So I basically was just co-signing mm-hmm. what the commenter said. I was just like, yeah, from perception, absolutely. If you look at marketing psychology, if mm-hmm. you look at marketing research, this has nothing to do with me personally as a person because I done bought some stuff from people who don't have a website right. just off GP because I'm just trying to support mm-hmm. whatever somebody's doing or maybe I'm familiar with some of their other endeavors yeah. and I know that yeah. they're not out here scamming and I just want to support if you have a business and we're trying to do transactions you don't have a website it's mm-hmm. like eh, I don't know about that you know right. and I was conveying right. that in the post um basically the the guy was just like um oh here go LLC Twitter uh- <laughs> here go rise and grind Twitter <laughs> telling all the poor people <laughs> What they need to do about their business. Just totally misconstruing the thing. Yeah. And I'm just like, clearly he don't know me. So I'm going to let him, him be know. great. <laughs> no, I wasn't even going to let him know. I'm not going back and forth because I was in the middle of paying an invoice, mm-hmm. sending an invoice, answering emails. Like I was in the middle of that and I was at work. Oh, goodness. So, so you I'm, multitasking. I'm, I'm not yeah. going to go. I was just, I, I think I basically ended it like me well. You know, that wasn't my intent. I just was telling people. He was like, well, if, why don't you reach in your purse and pay for their website then? Everybody can't pay for no website. Well, right I would I would actually respond to that with new businesses. If mm-hmm. you feel like you don't have the money to do it, you can't do it. Like I said, me and my brother are funding this ourselves. Mm-hmm. I'm currently not working. Let's mm-hmm. see how that works. Okay. Because Peter ain't getting paid, but Paul is. Hello? But here's the fun thing about some of the, the platforms that are available out there to us. Mm-hmm. Um, on Instagram, I've been watching different lives from marketing representatives and yeah. professionals. Yeah. And there are platforms out there like MailChimp, for example. You, yeah. can, create a, you can create a free profile and you can create a landing page yeah and that's all you really need mm-hmm. so don't tell don't let anyone tell you you know you can't do it because you don't have the money 
Right. There are free platforms out there for you to do it. And even if you don't have a website or a landing page, create your Instagram content to to just hone in on what you are doing. Mm -hmm. Help tell your story with Instagram mm -hmm. or Twitter or Facebook, just letting people know, hey, this yeah. is coming soon. Yeah. This is what we're offering. This is what it is about us. This is our current process. Mm -hmm. And then you build your base from there. Mm -hmm. It's not all about Hey, I don't have I don't have the money to do it. Yeah. There are platforms out there for us to do it. Yeah. But as African Americans, we are introduced to that. So I do appreciate the individuals that are on Instagram mm -hmm. or Facebook now mm -hmm. providing their services yeah. free for us that don't have it mm -hmm. that are trying to do it or, but are kind of lost. Absolutely. On how to do it with fifty dollars in the bank hello you know yeah so it, it's definitely appreciative of people like that so mm -hmm. it, it, it's doable yeah it's doable i and i thank you for for saying that and kind of clarifying everything if you just happen to be on that back and forth on the twitter house mm -hmm. please understand that my intent was not to be bougie <laughs> That she's was, not bougie. I know. She's not bougie. I mean, I can't. She's be. real, but she's not. I can bougie. be, but I'm actually, but I'm, but I'm a human being. I'm a person, yeah. and I, and I actually like to see human beings uh, flourish. Mm -hmm. And so, um, take advantage. You know, even for for all my people out there who have an idea and don't necessarily have the capital, yeah. um, use as many free resources as Absolutely. you can. YouTube University is great. YouTube University is amazing. <laughs> Um, you could, <laughs> you can take courses on Coursera. I mean, mm -hmm. I've taken, I've spent, you know, fifteen twenty dollars yeah. on a class in Coursera that has made me, you know, 10, 20 mm -hmm. times that money back just in See? the skills that I learned by taking a little fifteen twenty dollar yeah. class. Udemy, you know, yeah. um, you can get on to um different kinds of freelance sites, mm -hmm. um, freelance lands any skills that you have. Yeah. You'd be surprised what kind of skills people will pay you for. Shoot, it's medical it, medical transcription in is some of the easiest money you can get <laughs> if you got a good pair of headphones and you can type well. Yeah, get on and just transcribe. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you need to do to to do that to to get your money, go through your house. Anything you can sell on eBay, do it, do it, sell do it. it. You don't need it. You ain't touched it in two years. Sell it. You know, Do get it. it, get it out, get the energy out of your house, get the mm -hmm. money in your pocket so that you can put that capital towards your dream. Yeah. Of whatever and I, it is. I think right now we're, we're in very hard times. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. This is a perfect time to do it. Yeah. Learning, learn a new skill. Like you said, you can learn yeah. how to build your own website. Yeah, you absolutely can. You, you can go YouTube. get a class for thirty dollars, or 30, go to YouTube. Yeah, you can get a build your own class, whatever. You can get on, and 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 companies like Wix has made it very yeah. oh easy. My goodness, very easy, so easy, very 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 yeah. easy. So you know, don't sell yourself short. Um, no. make sure that you know, could because even though, you know, you may not have the capital unfortunately without the capital you still have to be competitive in the market mm -hmm. okay and in mm -hmm. order for you to do that you have to understand how people buy things mm -hmm. why do people buy things yep. why are people loyal to brand why are people attracted to certain brands right you know you have these are things yeah. that you need to learn so that you can tailor your marketing and 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 tailor um you know what it is that you're trying to do to 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 fit this and still mm -hmm. remain true to who you are and who the business is. Yep. All right. So, you know, I, I, I want everybody to be encouraged by all of this, but we're going to come back in a moment because we're about to get yes. some cocktail making. Yes. So, you know, as soon as we come back, I'm going to tell you about the cocktail and it's going to be fire. So y'all hang tight. Come and stimulate your mind with T -T -talks. Promise you'll never fall behind with T -T -talks. The knowledge you're seeking you can find with T -T -talks. Dot com. So come on and get with TT Talks Yeah Okay, we're back, we're back, we're back Sister TK Yes, yes She has made a cocktail for the gods A cocktail, her name is Serenity Serenity, Serenity. And I feel serene drinking this cocktail now This cocktail is you know, she told you we're not going to give too much away of what's in it, but I can say that it is raspberry inspired. But as a fan of raspberry, it's delicious. She had to muddle some raspberries at the bottom. Mm -hmm. She garnished the drink uh, with raspberries. It's very delicious, very refreshing. 
um, just like uh, how the whiskey tasted with the ice in it. Um, so even with our whiskey, like I said, it, it's a whiskey that we mm -hmm. want you to enjoy any way that you would like, but nobody thinks to put certain things in whiskey to make a cocktail. Mm -hmm. So this cocktail includes raspberries, uh, grenadine, and Sprite. So very simple, mm -hmm. simple to make, and it's refreshing. It has your your little carbonation in it if you yeah. want some, but you still get the the cinnamon mix with the raspberries. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like mm -hmm. having syrup on your raspberries. Yeah, <laughs> it is so lovely. It is, and I and like I said in the beginning of the show, I'm not a huge cocktail person. I, I mean, mm -hmm. there's some that I do like. Like I, I actually like more classic cocktails, mm -hmm. mint juleps and. Um, old fashioned, yeah, old yeah. fashions. Even a good Kentucky Mule is cool. Yeah, but um, but this is nice. It's not, it's it's not too sweet, but there's a fruitiness that balances very well. The cinnamon is kind of the the raspberry is kind of taking over the cinnamon. So mm -hmm. it's it's I'm more experiencing the rye. It's mm -hmm. like the cinnamon just blends into the background very yep. well. Um, it's delicious. So I am the bartender in the family. Mm -hmm. I make the drinks and sometimes people remember, you know, their evening and sometimes they don't. But, you know, <laughs> I have always been the one to make the drinks and everyone is always like, oh, my gosh, they're so good. They're so good. And I've also, you know, working in nightlife for so right, long. Right. I learned from some of the best. We have some of the best bartenders in Orlando. They're oh, like yeah. hidden gems. Oh, and yeah. They're slept on a lot. I agree. Yeah, but I, I learned a lot from them. And I just took all, all that knowledge and mm -hmm. put it into Red Hazel and what we have coming up. Delicious, delicious, delicious. I appreciate it. Um, do you have any closing words or anything you want to express to the listeners? Uh, Y'all just follow us, support us. Uh, we are trying to make this business boom as we know it will. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Red Hazel Official, Facebook, Red Hazel Official, and again, our website, redhazel.net again www.redhazel.net sign up for the mailing list because you'll get exclusive newsletters and mm -hmm. information from us um, we will also have other surprises that are in the works we have not confirmed some things so I can't speak on them just yet but if you sign up for the newsletter you will get that information within the next few weeks love it love it love it sister Thanks. tk thank you so much for coming on tt talk thanks for having me tt talk appreciate it tt loves to talk i love to talk to the people and i love to drink and she talked to me and brought me some <laughs> drink y'all so y'all already know i'm in a good mood i'm in a good space as she said follow the support um if you are somebody who enjoys some good spirits or you know somebody who enjoys some good spirits the holidays are coming up it's probably yes. a great gift yes it will be a great gift and we are also uh, like i said setting up events if anyone's interested in doing any type of partnerships or anything mm -hmm. they can reach out to me tk burton at redhazel.net and that's burton with an i in Okay. Not O N. <laughs> B U R T I N. Yes. Okay. T I N. Burton. We got it. We got it. Thank you all for listening. Of course, if you are just now getting into the magic of TT Talks, I need you to catch up, Mustard. Okay. We got a whole <laughs> plethora of shows and content. You can definitely. Uh, get a lot of the information that you want and need on tttalks.com. Uh, my podcast is housed on my site. It also mm -hmm. can be listened to on YouTube. It also can be listened to on Spotify, on iHeartRadio. It also can be uh, listened to on um, uh, Apple Podcasts and Google Play Music. I'm just trying to make sure I cover all of the streaming platform. Usually, if it's a <laughs> streaming platform that you have that you listen to podcasts, it's highly likely that TT Talks is on there. If you can't find it on there, you can definitely just go to tttalks.com. It is always there. And mm -hmm. I, I, for my people who this is not your first rodeo, I appreciate you listening. Shout out to all of my patrons. I may have to do a special Red Hazel giveaway for my patrons. Yes. I'll have to talk to Sister TK about that. Um, where you know I can I I can purchase a couple of of bottles and I can do some giveaways for um some of my most trusted um 
and 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 consistent patrons because I, I I appreciate y'all and I want to return the love. So stay mm -hmm. tuned for that. I'll make sure that 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 we have it. I'll probably have something to where you you know you'll have to. I'll probably do a drawing of some type. You know where you know you have to use a a, a hashtag when I go into mm -hmm. post production for this show. I will make sure to put all of the details in once I think about what it is <laughs> that I want to do. But I want to make sure that I get a bottle of red hazel in one of your hands. Um, and I also just want to support what the sister got going on. So thank you all for tuning in. I want everybody to have a blessed week, month, year. Um, if you're having a rough time right now, it's going to get better. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Rest when you're tired. Rest yes. when you can. Outsource when you can. Yes. Um, get some help when you can. Preach. <laughs> get some help when you can. Listen, get a therapist if you can. Whatever you need to do to push through, if you're doing very well right now, I hope that you continue to ride the wave. Make sure that you bring somebody up with you. Make sure yes. that you help somebody. And uh, I'll see you on the next episode. Peace. Thanks, TT. Yeah. Thank you so much for rocking with me and Sister TK on TT Talks. As promised, here is how you can enter into the drawing for a bottle of red hazel, okay? Number one, subscribe to TT Talks as well as Red Hazel on Instagram. Uh, you make sure you share uh, the link. Wherever you share it from is fine. Whether you share from IG, whether you're sharing from YouTube, whether you're sharing uh, on, on Facebook, as long as you share it, use the hashtag TT Talks Red Hazel. That's all together, TT Talks Red Hazel. Please use that hashtag because that is how I'm going to be able to track it. Okay. If you are a TT Talks patron, I'm going to double your entries into the drawing just off GP. Okay. So make sure you do all of those things. Uh, I'll look to do the drawing in the next few weeks, you know, so you make sure that you stay tuned. Okay. So make sure you do all of those steps so that you can have a chance to win a bottle of red hazel. Keep rocking with TT on TT Talks. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace.